Hey guys, my little brain was thinking about anti-reversion and TPI, and I decided to do a little experiment. So, <clears throat> it hasn't moved in weeks. So it's still port number 8. It flows around 270 at 600. In fact, uh, today, even though it's almost 86 degrees in the garage, it flowed 271 at 600. Big difference, right? Huge. Not really. So, this is a fairly decent size radius clay on here. A little fatter than I usually use, actually. Does the size of our radius make a difference? It actually does. I'll probably do a full experiment on that someday, but that's not what we're going to do today. I'm going to go from this clay radius to a 1204 hard radius, and then I'm going to do an experiment on top of that. So I'm just going to pause you guys in between them, and we're going to see what we got. All right, we're going to give it a, a whirl with the 1204. We fit pretty good with a little clay on it. Okay, the hard radius doesn't flow quite as well as the clay. Does that surprise you? It doesn't really surprise me. The uh, If you look at a good set of ram tubes, they do have a rounded edge, right? So now what I'm going to do, I don't know if it's an easy way to explain it or not. Okay, it's kind of a crazy idea, but I'm full of them. So what I think I'm going to do is, this is my 1204, right? This is my 1205. I want to put one over the other. Why would you do that? Well, I'm thinking of alignment stuff, and part of me wants to... I may do this a couple different ways. I want to see. I want to see how it flows this way. Now, of course, the 1205 is is bigger than the cylinder head, so that's going to affect this, right? But if we put the 1204 and then the 1205, we got a little bit bigger, bigger radius coming down, hitting another radius. I want to see what it does. Okay, going from the 1204 with a stack 1205 on it was a loser. Okay, you know what we're going to try now? We're going to try the 1204 with a 1206 over it and see what it does. All right, so you can see I got a little bit of clay added on here to fit it around there perfectly. Obviously, that's got to be just right because I did. The 1204 on the head with the 1206 outside it, it got, went 263 at 600. Then for S and Gs, I took the 1204 and I put it right on the head and it flowed 264. The only thing I can think of that's different is, you know, it's not bolted down. I'm holding it with my hand so we could get leakage there somewhere. It's got to be that little bit of clay. All right, guys. I can't believe this didn't turn off on me. I did a couple of wacky experiments with this. Okay. Let's see where we left off, because I don't remember. All right. The 1204 by itself was 264. 1206 by itself. you got to remember, as these get bigger, there's more of a lip around the entrance of the, the cylinder head port that gives us an edge effect. Okay, and the 1205 was 257. Now, at the very bottom, what I did is I took, I took all three of these and I stacked them up. With the 1204, I did take the clay off the 1204, so it doesn't match exactly perfect. So it did lose a few CFM right there. But it made it easier for me to stack them. I stack them all up. And maneuvered them up and down. It was actually kind of interesting because you can make the air go to the roof a little easier or to the floor a little easier. But it averaged out around 254 with all three of those in a row. So what I'm thinking of is I'm going to draw a quick picture of it to, to show you guys. Okay, I'm thinking of, of anti-reversion. Now I've done this a million different times for, for intake manifolds, single planes and dual planes, right? where the intake runner is coming in and it's always a little bit smaller than than the head, okay? 
always do it that way. Do the same thing from a carb into a planner. I do the same thing going from an exhaust port to a header flange. I do this on everything. Works really well for me. I'm sure there are some guys somewhere that say, oh, that's you're not going to make maximum amount of power that way. Well, you have to remember most of my most of my stuff was all street stuff with probably too big a cam. That does make a difference, okay? And the more you can back down a reversion, the more you can get away with a big bigger than you should cam. So now we can do something like this, right? Which I don't I mean I would have to actually shrink my twelve oh four to get this this done. I wonder if that's going to make any difference. I think I'm going to try that next. Okay, this didn't work out great. Then again, it's not exactly what I have in the drawer room either. It's more like a, a speed bump at the roof. What I really need to do is, is make it more square. I'm going to take it off and try again. Make it more square. Okay, redo it with a little bit square. You can see we took up the... Uh, Probably almost 150 thousandths, so it's it's quite a big lip. Okay, that's starting to to get where I want to go. And I was doing a, a bunch of uh, I looked up a bunch of fluid dynamic stuff at lunch break today, and uh, <clears throat> I thought it was very interesting. All right, if you have something like this, let's just change the shape of it a little bit. Make it straight like this, but then a sharp edge, right? It's very interesting the way it, it flows through here and then it, it expands. I think you guys need to look that up and, uh, and take a look at it and give me your opinion on what that does on an intake track and an exhaust track for that matter. Now you have to remember also, when you're doing something like this, right, we're going to get pulses that come back. And if they hit a sharp edge here, right, some of that pulse is dampened. Anti-reversion stuff. Now, what if you did something like that on a TPI with really long runners? Think about how many places you could do it. You could do it from the throttle body to the plenum. Plant them to the runners, runners to the base, base to the head. That's a lot of intersections right there. What do you think that'll do to the whole system? I know what I think it's going to do, and I think it's probably a really good experiment to try. I don't know if the customer is going to go for it, but I'll put it out there. What's the worst thing to do? They can say no, doesn't want it, it's fine. That is just fine. Uh, I'm, like I said, I'm 99% sure I know what that's going to do. And uh, when I finally do my own TPI project, and I plan on someday, I know mine will look like that. All right, guys, it's it's not a long one. It's it's a little it's a little of a wacky experiment, but. My little brain is working, and i got to work out some stuff, and I might as well show you guys what uh, madness I'm thinking of. You have to remember that we're, we're operating with a relatively small opening and pinch right now, and we're getting 271 out of it. In reality, that opening's a little bit shy for our 1204. Remember, I don't do my final gasket match until basically the heads are done. That's like the, one of the last things I do because uh, it's just too easy to bang up and ruin. So give me some feedback on this, guys. It's uh, I know it's a little strange, but I think it's, uh, it's worth looking at. Thanks for hanging out, guys. Have a good night. All right, I know I signed off already, but I decided to do the same thing on the bottom and then do some air speeds. So I took up a lot, a lot of this with clay. 
and as of right now we are 254.1 at 0.6 that's with the 1204 with uh, about 300 thousandths of, of the the intake plugged off and what's really interesting is our air speeds went over 400 in that now kind of interesting especially on our curved our curved wall on the right here where our push rod pinches I don't have the light on let me I don't really the reason I didn't have the light on is because uh, I knew there'd be long stretches where this was uh, paused all right guys I don't know what else I'm gonna do to show you tonight Okay, kind of interesting. I just took the top off. I did have to bring it down so we did had a relatively uh, nice match there. You can see the corners are still uh, notchy. But the way this sits right now, that flows 266.2. Let's measure how high that is. All right, it measures about 261 thousandths. Let's shrink that up quite a bit. But what it wound up doing is we wound up getting less flow on that floor. Kind of interesting to think how you can change the dynamics, right, of, uh, of the whole port. Now, remember, we haven't raised this port a whole lot. I'm sure I can raise this port, I bet, a hundred thousandths without any problems whatsoever. And remember, that was kind of part of the game plan to change the interference from the, the TPIS where it's coming out at a very low angle. We're trying to curve this some more, right? Give it a more gradual turn into the runner because this is a very low, this is a very low manifold. All right, it did a couple air speeds. I used that little flag. It's very interesting how, even though you have a dead straight corner, the air is right there. It goes, it fills in that area very rapidly. Interesting things to, uh, to take a look at. I mean, it did change, it did change my air speeds in the pinch, but it didn't change it a whole lot in the bowl and on the short side. By that time, it's already it's following the port and it's doing what it's got to do. So, but if we also calculated up our, our square inches right there, I bet we're pretty small. All right, even though we sucked that up, it's still bigger than our pinch. Our pinch is only about 1.9, and we're still 2.1 at that point because it's on the expanding radius side, right? It's before our pinch, so it is going to be bigger. All right, guys, I think I'm going to quit. It's almost 90 degrees in here. Not really good to run the bench when it's that hot. Give me an idea if you like this or not. Thanks for hanging out, guys. Good night.